Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. In this video, I will guide you to let you know what are the common fraud and scams in the digital era and how to become a smart and positive user to avoid becoming a scammer's victim. In general, the digital era is a period that has experienced developments in all aspects of life to become completely digital. And you should know that digital transformation equals to fraud transformation. It means that new business models plus new technology plus a bit of imagination equals to the new frauds. So the telecoms industry has always suffered from the malicious impacts of fraudsters. Okay, we talk about the transformation and now, here is a quick review about the historical development of the digital technology. In 1947, the transistor, which was introduced in 1947, paved the way for the development of advanced digital computers. By the 1950s and 1960s, many governments, military forces, and other organizations were already using computers. Soon after, the computer was introduced for household use, and by the 1970s, many families had computers for personal use. This occurred at around the same time that video games became popular, but for home surface and archive use. The infiltration of digital technology even led to the creation of jobs. By the 1980s, brought computer production to films, robots to industry, automated teller machines or ATMs to banks. By the 1991, analog mobile phones made way to digital mobile phones, and then the demand soar. This was the same year that the internet was made available to the public. By the end of the decade, the internet was so popular that many businesses had a website and nearly every country on earth had a connection. When the 21st century began, cell phones were a common possession and high-definition television became the most common broadcasting method, replacing analog television. By 2015, around 50% of the world had constant internet connection, and ownership rates of smartphones and commonness of tablet possession have nearly surpassed those of home computers. So, we are living in a world where the technology always upgraded time by time. When we entering the digital era, there are so many positive impacts and also the negative impact that you need to know in order for you to prepare yourself. First, it simplifies everyday life making life easier with all the advancement of the technology. It helps people to solve their problems, reduce access time, and help to interact and exchange information. Another positive impact is the improvement of productivity, enhanced learning, and also the development around the economy, business, education, society, health, and other sector. While the negative impact of people going through digital is first the loss of privacy. While the value of data is rising, the loss of privacy in the digital era is becoming a reality. Above all, we need to understand the limit of privacy as control. Also, it stimulates the health issues. And the last is about cybercrime issues. Have you ever get random calls, messages, emails, and any other notifications to ask you money over your prices and lotteries? Based on the data from Indonesian National Police reported the cybercrime cases on April 2020 to July 2021, there are 937 total cases reported, included the provocative and hate content online fraud, porn, illegal access on data, data forgery, 
gambling, blackmail, thief identity, and hacking. Now, let's talk about what are the common frauds and scams that can happen to you in the digital age and how to protect yourself from every fraud and scams activity. First is COVID-19 scams. The world still facing the COVID-19 pandemic where it not only creates health issues, but also for the scammers, they can try to take advantage to you. They might get in touch by phone, emails, postal mails, text, or social media. Scammers change their methods frequently, and the current coronavirus scams included first, the identity theft. Next is COVID-19 testing, vaccine, and treatment scams. And the last is rumors, myths, and conspiracy theories about the coronavirus. Second is financial fraud and scams. There are types of financial fraud and scams. Here is the cryptocurrency scams, where the scammers do fake exchange, where they send emails or post messages on social media or fake websites promising access to virtual money stored on a cryptocurrency exchange. The only drawback is that the user usually has to pay a small fee first, the exchange never exists, and your money is lost forever. The second is investment scams. It promises high returns without financial risk. Next is overpayment scams. When someone sends you a check, instructs you to deposit in your bank account and wire part of the money back to them, but the check was fake. So you'll have to pay your bank the amount of the check, plus you lose any money you wired. Next is automatic withdrawals. They set up automatic withdrawals from your bank account to qualify for a free trial or to collect a price. And the last is phishing. You receive an email, WhatsApp message, Telegram that asks you to verify your bank account habit card number or your e-payment apps third is telephone scams your phone rings you recognize the number but when you pick up it's someone else what's the deal these scammers try to steal your money or personal information scams may come through phone calls from real people phone calls or text messages callers often make false promises such as opportunities to buy products, invest your money, or receive free products trials. Fourth, the census-related fraud. Census scams happen when someone pretends to work for the census bureau to steal your personal information. Fifth, is the lottery and sweepstakes scams. Price scammers try to get your money or personal information through fake lotteries, sweepstakes or other contest many claim that you have won a prize but must pay a fee to collect it others require you to provide personal information to enter a contest these scams may reach you by postal mail emails phone call robocall or the text message sixth the ticket scams ticket selling scams happen when a scammer uses tickets as bait to steal your money. The scammer usually sells fake tickets or you pay for a ticket but never receive it. They are common when tickets for popular concerts, plays, and sporting events sell out and also the travel ticket. Seventh, charity scams. Some scammers set up fake organizations to take advantage of the public's generosity. They especially take advantage of the tragedies and disasters. 8. Romance scams Romance scams occur when a criminal adopts a fake online identity to gain a victim's affection and trust. The scammer then uses the illusion of a romantic or close relationship to manipulate and or steal from the victim. The worst case is they can be a treat of your life. Here is the fraud case in Indonesia. For the example here, the Tokopedia e-commerce hacked 91 million accounts available on the dark web. 
Tokopedia is an Indonesian technology company specializing in e-commerce. It currently operates as Indonesia's largest online store. In 2019, Tokopedia revealed that there are around 91 million active accounts on its platforms. This means that almost all accounts on Tokopedia have been successfully retrieved by the hacker. Based on the data from cnnindonesia.com, a hacker is selling a database containing the information of 91 million Tokopedia accounts on a dark web market for as little as $5,000. The most serious of the exposed the data consists of a user's email address, the full name, birth date, and other personal information, and also has the user passwords. They claimed that they have checked and confirmed that user payment data in the form of debit cards, credit cards, account, and other e-payment applications were safe. What Tokopedia users can do is change their password and activate an OTP or one-time password via short message. Then, change all the passwords from social media accounts and marketplace platforms other than Tokopedia. So, what's your action to prevent the fraud and scams and how you to be a smart people in this digital age? Let's learn what you can do and don't to avoid becoming a victim. What we can learn this in this case is that for the entrepreneur, it is important to secure all the data, company. especially when you Reports enter online business where the security of the customer or the user data on are suspicious. the most important Calls. thing for the company. You wary of and then as a customer or a user, always aware when you're entering number. digital era, Verify the take control of your digital life, keep you. all your information you safe in a right place. Use the contact information on a bank's website. Be wary of callers claiming that you have won a prize or vacation package. Ask their page if they pretend from an agency. Do research. Verify the name. Buy tickets from authorized probes and third-party sellers with verified contact information. Here's what you don't need to do. Don't rely on caller ID to verify who's calling. Don't give in to pressure to take immediate action. Don't say anything if a caller starts to call asking, Can you hear me? This is a common tactic for scammers to record you saying yes. When it happens, they can use it as a proof that you agreed to a purchase or credit card charge. Don't provide your bank information or your identity to a caller. Don't send money if a caller tells you to wire money or pay with a prepaid debit card. Don't be influenced by promises that seems too good to be true. Don't feel obligated to invest even if the professional gave you a gift, lunch, or reduce their fees. Don't pay a fee, taxes, or shipping charge to receive a price. And also don't give in to high pressure tactics such as arguing you to donate immediately. In this digital age, it is good enough to realize that the world is changing in profound ways. Sometimes, it is nice to just recognize important things happening around us and from there start to connect the dots of how it impacts our lives. The cybercrime is only going to get worse over time unless Preventive measures are taken to stop it. So, protect yourself, be alert, take control of your digital life, and don't be a victim of cyber scams. We are in the end of this video. Hope this video can help you to know more about what are the common fraud and scams in the digital era, and also how you to become a smart and positive users in this digital era and hope it useful thank you very much don't forget to like comment and subscribe this channel see you on the next topic